Zoax.net. Lesson 10. Common Products. In this video, I cover some basic multiplication formulas for polynomials. To clarify some terminology, recall that we said that a polynomial with a single term is called a monomial. Not surprisingly, a polynomial with two terms is called a binomial. Likewise, a polynomial with three terms is called a trinomial. Beyond that, we usually refer to them simply as polynomials. This lesson covers three basic formulas for multiplying two binomials. Knowing these formulas is important because they come up frequently in algebra. However, it is even more important to understand the reasoning behind how they are derived so that you can generalize the method for deriving them. For our first formula, we have the general product of two binomials. We begin with a plus b times c plus d, where a, b, c, and d are real variables. For our first step, we treat c plus d as a single real value and distribute it across the terms a and b using the right distributive property. For our second step, we can apply the left distributive property to each of these terms to get our final result. So our general product of binomials formula tells us that the product of two binomials is equal to the sum of these four monomials. Now that we have a formula, we can make substitutions into it. In this example, we set a equal to 3x, b equal to 2, c equal to 4y, and d equal to 1. Using our formula, this is equal to 3x times 4y plus 3x times 1 plus 2 times 4y plus 2 times 1. This simplifies to 12xy plus 3x plus 8y plus 2. For our second formula, we look at the sum a plus b squared. This is just a plus b times a plus b by the definition of exponents. Now we have the product in the form of our first formula with c equal a and d equal b. With this substitution, we get a times a plus a times b plus b times a plus b times b. The first and the last terms are a squared and b squared by the property of exponents, and b a is equal to a b by multiplicative commutativity. We can combine the a b terms by the distributive property, and we get a squared plus 2 a b plus b squared after this simplification. This formula is used very often in algebra and in many important roles, as we will see later on. Notice that the result is a trinomial because two of the terms combined into one. Again, we can try a substitution to get a feeling for how this formula works. Set a equal to 2x and b equal to 3y, and we get 2x the quantity squared plus 2 times 2x times 3y plus 3y the quantity squared. And this is equal to 4x squared plus 12xy plus 9y squared after some simplification. For our third formula, we have the difference of squares. To get this formula, we use the generalized formula with c equal a and d equal negative b. Then we get a plus b times a minus b equals a times a plus a times minus b plus b times a plus b times minus b. The first term is a squared by the definition of exponents. The second term is negative a b by the additive inverse of a product rule. The third term is a b by commutativity and the fourth term is minus b squared by the definition of exponents and the additive inverse of a product. The two middle terms are additive inverses, so the final product is a squared minus b squared by the additive identity. Notice that the result is a binomial, that is, it only has two terms because the other ones cancel. For this reason, the pattern of this product is special and it tends to come up often. We will see that it has a very prominent role later on. To demonstrate the formula, we can make a substitution set a equal to negative 2y and b equal to 3x. Then we get negative 2y plus 3x times negative 2y minus 3x, which is negative 2y times negative 2y minus 3x times 3x after substituting into the left-hand side. 
and this simplifies to 4y squared minus 9x squared. Each of these formulas is derived from our basic distributive property, which defines how to multiply a monomial and a binomial. Using the distributive property, we can build up even larger formulas, as we will see later on. Knowing these formulas is particularly important for going in the opposite direction. That is, we will see polynomials like this one that we want to turn into a product like this. This process is called factoring, and it is useful for many reasons. I've been substituting monomials into these formulas, and you might wonder why I can do that. The answer is that these formulas are true for all real numbers, and every polynomial of real variables is a real number by closure under addition and multiplication. So we could even substitute larger polynomials into our formulas if we wanted to do so, and they would still be valid. 